Hello and welcome to a new episode of CP Kids Bible Lesson. We are so glad that you are joining us. Before we get started, we just want to remind you to remember that God made you special. He loves you infinitely and he is always, always there for you. Never forget that. We want to talk to you about our new BGMC goal for the year. It's a new year, so we have a new goal. And as you can probably guess, the year is 2021. So our new goal for the year is $2,021, which I'm really excited about because I think you guys can do it this year. I believe in you. I know you can do it. So get creative and start thinking about ways that you can save up money for BGMC. And we will even see in today's scripture passage from Philippians and the lesson that it is not possible to outgive God. Pastor Hannah, why don't we pray before we get into Philippians this week? Let's Can do you it. believe this? This lesson and next week's lessons are We're the last ones in Philippians. Almost done with Philippians. It's been such a cool series. It has been. And what is the big question that Philippians asks? The big question or yep. the theme? The big, the big question that it answers. <laughs> I don't know what the I question is. I got this. Okay. It answers the question, what is joy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which was probably the theme you were going to I was going to say, it's a theme of joy, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are going to pray the Lord's Prayer. We talked about it a little last week, but this is the prayer that Jesus taught to his followers when they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And this is what he said. And uh, please repeat after me, because I'd love for you to begin to learn this prayer as well. Our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. We pray that your name will always be kept holy. We pray that your name will always be kept holy. We pray that your kingdom will come. We pray that your kingdom will come. We pray that what you want will be done. We pray that what you want will be done. Here on earth as it is in heaven. Here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the food we need for each day. Give us the food we need for each day. Forgive the sins we have done. Forgive the sins that we have done. Just as we have forgiven those who did wrong to us. Just as we have forgiven those who have done wrong to us. And do not cause us to be tested. And do not cause us to be tested. But save us from the evil one. But save us from the evil one. Amen. Amen. So let it be. So let it be. I know, guys, that that is kind of a long prayer, and you might be thinking, how will I ever learn it? But I promise you, the more you say it, the more you'll learn it. And, I mean, Jesus said this is how we should pray, so it's probably important to learn. Okay, let's check out our next lesson in Philippians. Woo! <laughs> You're from Mississippi, then you're called a Mississippian. And if you live in Philippi, they call you a Philippian. It's also a letter written by Paul, and we are going to read it all. Thankfully, it's pretty small, so come along with me and read Philippians. Good evening, friends! This is Emily Elephant. And Sam the Turtle. With the Nightly News. That's the news. Nightly. What's the news, Sam? I can do all things through Christ because he gives me strength. But that doesn't mean I can fly or climb walls or shoot web out of my toes. Or leap at tall buildings in a single bound. Or survive in the cold, dark vacuum of a space without a spacesuit. Unless God wants you to do one of those things. Because God can do anything. That's true. Point being, the verse, I can do all things through Christ because he gives me strength, doesn't mean I can do anything I want to do. It means I can do anything a God wants me to do. For Paul, he might have wanted God to turn him into the Incredible Hulk so he could smash his way out of prison. 
But God wanted him to have strength to be happy while he was in prison, so he could keep telling people about Jesus. And so he'd have time to write letters about following Jesus, like the one we're studying right now. Hey, that's a good point. If Paul had turned into the Hulk and smashed out of a jail, we might not have this letter to the Philippians. And then what would we be studying? Incredible Hulk comic books? I don't think so. I don't think so either. So we're glad God gave Paul the strength to do what God wanted him to do, to tell people the good news about Jesus while he was in prison and write all these letters that are teaching us so much. Now we're really close to the end of Paul's letter to the Philippians. So in Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 through 18, Paul talks about the gifts he's gotten from the church in Philippi. What kind of gifts? Like birthday presents? Maybe a bike? Or a new sweater? Or a new shell? Because he got it too big for his old shell? Uh, no, not really like birthday presents. You see, in the ancient world, when you were put in prison, quite often, the guards wouldn't feed you. They wouldn't really take care of you at all. So a prisoner's friends or family would have to show up at the prison to take care of them. Paul needed friends to help him out, and it seems the church in Philippi sent him money so he could get food and paper and ink to write his letters. This is a pretty important important. It's a hard to write letters without a paper and the ink. Or food, for that matter. It's hard to do anything without food. Last Tuesday, I tried to play basketball without eating anything first. Passed out halfway through the game. When I woke up, they were using me as the ball. So without the help of his friends in Philippi, Paul might not have lasted very long. And we might not have these letters. Exactly. So Paul takes time in this letter to thank the Philippians for their gifts. He wants them to know how much they've helped him. Uh, then we get to verses 19 and 20. Uh, can someone read those? My turn, my turn! My God will use his wonderful riches in Christ Jesus to give you everything you need. Glory to our God and Father forever and ever. Amen. He said amen. Does that mean it's done? Is it time to go home? Not quite done, but we're close. Only three more verses after this. My God will use his wonderful riches in Christ Jesus to give you everything you need. What do you think that means? They finally get everything they need! Ponies, video games, maybe their own amusement park. They're gonna be so happy. Okay, back up. What has Paul been talking about in this letter? And how does that shape what this verse might mean? Hmm, Paul has been talking about being happy no matter what he has. A lot of food or no food, rich or poor, in prison or out of prison. On a train or in a plane, in a box or with a fox. So maybe he isn't talking about God giving them money or food. Maybe he's talking about contentment, happiness, joy, life with God. Maybe. It's hard to know for sure what Paul means here. He's talking to the Philippians who have just taken money they could have spent on their own food and their own needs and instead have given it to Paul to make sure he has the things he needs. So Paul might be saying, don't worry about your own needs. Trust God and he will take care of you since you took care of me. So the lesson here could be that we should never be afraid to help someone else because we're worried there won't be enough left for us. We should always help others and then trust that God will help us. So is that like a promise? If I give my friend $5, will God give me $5 back? Or how about 10 bucks back? I'd like to make money on the deal. Uh, no, this is not a promise, and it's not a money-making plan. This specific verse is specifically for the Philippian Christians who have just given Paul a gift. But there's a principle here that runs throughout the book of Philippians and applies to all of us. Always give a money to guys named Paul? I don't think that's it. Something to do with joy? Contentment? Happiness? Something to do with trust. Uh, go back to verses 6 and 7. Do not worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need. And when you pray, always give thanks, and God's peace will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We worry about all sorts of things. Do I have enough money? If I give some of my money to help someone else, will I still have enough, or will I run out? I do worry about that a lot. And I'm a turtle. I don't even have pockets. Here's what Paul is saying. Trust God. Tell him what you're worried about, and then give those worries to him. He can handle them. 
and ask for his peace and love and joy, which are way better than having more money or clothes or toys. That's the principle that applies to all of us. If we'd only trust in God, we'd be a lot happier. You can say that again. See you next time. All right, guys, what a cool lesson in Philippians about the next few verses. As we talked last week, we talked about how we can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, but not just all things, what God really wants us to do. He will give us the strength to do it. And that kind of rolls into the theme for this week. The verse that we picked to go over is from Philippians 4, 19. And it says, My God will use his wonderful riches in Christ Jesus to give you everything you need. What does this verse mean to you, Pastor Brandon? What pops into your head when you hear this? Hmm. Can we maybe read it together one more time? All right. Ready? Yes. My God will use his wonderful riches in Christ Jesus to give you everything you need. Hmm. My God will use his wonderful riches in Christ Jesus to everything you need so maybe that means I can be have like as much money as I want it does sound like that when you use the word riches right but it also says riches in Christ Jesus okay well it makes me think about next week or not next week last week um, where Jesus is talking about how we can do anything through him who gives us strength. So maybe it's the same sort of thing, that it's not like we can do anything we want, but we can have everything that Jesus wants us to have. I think another key word in there is not everything you want, but everything you need, too. Oh, that's that does seem like an important word. <laughs> Sometimes we, we, we may want things that are good, but they're not necessarily good for us or things that we need. And we just have to trust that God knows exactly what we need and will provide that for us when we need it. So really, I guess this comes down to trusting that God has goodness in store for us. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that our lives are going to be perfect or easy all the time. But he will work it out. Absolutely. And when we get to a point where we need something, he will be there with us. Mm -hmm. So how does this tie into the theme of joy that kind of goes throughout Philippians? Um, I think it comes back to the idea that we can choose joy. Mm. Um, that it's a decision we make, but not a feeling that we have. That um, even if we aren't feeling happy, we can still have joy. Even if life is hard, we can still have joy because we have the riches, one which we have through Christ Jesus is salvation. We know that no matter how bad this world is, that we're going to go and we're going to be in God's kingdom. We're going to be in heaven after mm -hmm. we leave this world. Yeah. And I think the riches in Christ Jesus is such a cool statement too because um, that's like the best thing that you could ever have is like, with Christ and so you can have joy in that because it's better than anything else better than any riches of the world or better than anything that you could possibly get on earth the riches in Christ Jesus is the best possible thing that you can have and so that gives us joy knowing that we have that no matter what yeah what's better gold or knowing the person who made the gold right <laughs> So now that we've kind of had a discussion and maybe given you some things to think about, we're going to give you guys uh, about 15 seconds to just really pray and ask God to speak to you through this verse. So I'm going to read it one more time. We'll have some music playing, and we'll give you 15 seconds to really just ask God, what do you want to say to me? All right? You ready? I'm going to read it one more time. Philippians 4.19. My God will use his ri wonderful riches in Christ Jesus to give you everything you need.
Father God, thank you that we have um, a home in heaven because of you, because of what you did, and that all you ask is that we follow you to heaven and we can go there. Um, help us to trust in you that you will always give us what we need. Help us not to be worried or afraid, but have joy and love and peace no matter what. Amen. Brings us to the good news, Pastor Hannah. And I really just enjoy talking about the good news. And like we said last week, we're making it a little simpler because we want you who are watching this to really be able to learn how to tell people you know about the good news in a simple way as possible. And here is how it starts. God is real and he really loves you. And if you or someone you know, if you, if you say that to someone and they're like, oh, I'm not sure if God's real or I'm not sure that he loves me. Like a lot of bad things happen in this world. So maybe he doesn't actually love everyone. All you have to do is do this when, when they say that. Just ask, tell them that they all they need to do is ask God to show them that he is real and that he really loves them. And so when someone says that, all you do in response is say, well, are you willing to ask God to show you that he's real and that he really loves you? And if they are, and if they pray and ask God to show them that he's real and he really loves them, then he will reveal himself to them. And maybe you're, you're watching this video right now and you're thinking like, I, I can sense that God is real. Like I know somehow like God is real and I can feel his love for me. If that's you watching right now, then all you have to do to receive God's love is admit that you aren't perfect and you need help. Um, believe in God and his power to save you and choose to follow him. Um, we call it the ABCs. Admit I'm not perfect and I need help. Believe in God and his power to save me and choose to follow him. So if you want to do that, if you want to accept the good news, accept God's love, say this prayer with me. Father in heaven, Father in heaven, I admit that I'm not perfect. I admit that I'm not perfect. And I need help. And I need help. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. And your power to save me. And your power to save me. I choose to follow you with all my life. I choose to follow you with all my life. Amen. Amen. Guys, if you just prayed that prayer, that is such an incredible thing. And if you're still not sure if God's real or he really loves you, I would encourage you, pray and ask God to show you that he is real and that he loves you. And he will answer your prayer. If you're with us and, and you just prayed that prayer or you're already a Christian, I just want to say, like, I am so joyful that you made that decision. And um, I look forward to not just seeing you here on earth, but in heaven um, when we go to be with God. Yeah. Like, what a blessing. Um, the best two ways, once you decide to become a follower of Jesus, to learn better how to follow Jesus is one, to read God's Word, to read the Bible, and two, to be around other people who follow Jesus, other people who are also Christians. And the best place for both of those things is church. And that's why it's so important to be part of a church and to come to church because that's where you can learn about God's words and be with other people who are Christians. We're so glad that you have joined us again today. Join us again next week for another lesson. The last Do one it. in Philippians. So don't miss it, guys. You can hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel so you can see the videos as soon as they're uploaded and watch them over and over again if you want to. But we're so happy that you joined us today. So now go this week with the peace of God as you serve others and share the good news that God is real and he really loves you. Bye.